Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how both environmental and genetic factors contribute to an organism's phenotype. You should then be able to describe how sexual reproduction can lead to genetic variation within a species. And finally, you should be able to describe what's meant by continuous and discontinuous variation. OK, I'm showing you here two cats. The cat on the left has a normal body mass. However, the cat on the right is significantly overweight. Now, body mass in animals, including humans, is determined by a combination of genetics and the environment. For example, the alleles present play a major role in determining the growth of an organism. However, in the case of severely overweight or severely underweight individuals, then the environment is a major factor. For example, an individual may be consuming a diet which is very high in energy. The excess energy is stored as fat, leading to obesity. On the other hand, a severely underweight individual may not be consuming enough energy. Exercise can also play a role. An overweight individual may not be active enough to expend the energy provided by their diet. Or an individual may be undertaking too much exercise, leading to weight loss. And disease can also be a factor in body mass. For example, an individual with cancer may lose weight rapidly. Now, in rare cases, obesity can be caused by genetics. The mouse on the left has a genetic mutation in a gene involved in appetite. Mice with this mutation have a significantly greater body mass than mice without this mutation. Now, variation in plants can also be caused by genetic factors and environmental factors. A good example is the amount of chlorophyll in leaves. Chlorophyll is produced in a series of reactions catalyzed by different enzymes, and these enzymes are encoded by genes. Usually, plants produce high levels of chlorophyll in order to capture light energy for photosynthesis. However, the environment can also influence the amount of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll contains the element magnesium. So, if a plant is deficient in magnesium, it cannot produce high levels of chlorophyll. In this case, the leaves appear light green, and scientists call this chlorosis. We see the same effect if a plant is deficient in iron. Chlorosis can also be caused by viral infections, or if the plant is kept in the dark. Dark conditions can also cause a plant to grow a long, weak stem, as the plant searches for light. This is called etiolation. So as we've seen, both genetics and the environment can lead to variation. Now a major source of genetic variation is due to sexual reproduction. When an organism produces gametes by meiosis, each of those gametes is genetically different. During meiosis, chromosomes are shuffled by independent assortment. Genetic material is also exchanged between chromosomes during crossing over. And we saw both of these in the video on meiosis. Because gametes are genetically different, this produces genetic variation in an organism's offspring. Secondly, organisms that reproduce by sexual reproduction often produce a very large number of gametes. Fertilization between these gametes is a random process. In other words, we cannot predict which male gamete and which female gamete will fuse during fertilization. And again, this introduces genetic variation between the offspring. OK, now some examples of variation are due only to genetic factors, with the environment playing no role. A good example is blood group in humans. There are four blood groups in humans. These are A, B, AB and O. And which blood group you have is determined by a single gene. We're going to be looking at the inheritance of blood groups in a later video. Now, if we plot the percentage of people with each blood group, we get the bar chart I'm showing here. As you can see, any individual can only have one blood group, and there are no in-between blood groups. Scientists call this discontinuous or discrete variation. Remember that in discontinuous variation, a characteristic can only have specific values with no in-between values. And characteristics showing discontinuous variation are controlled by either a single gene or a very small number of genes. And in discontinuous variation, the environment plays no role or very little role in the characteristic. Now, in contrast, 
characteristics showing continuous variation can have any value within a range. Scientists call this a continuum of values between the smallest value and the greatest value. We normally represent continuous variation using a histogram overlaid with a curve. A good example of continuous variation is height in humans. Now I should point out that the histogram I'm showing here is only representative, since the actual numbers depend on the group being sampled. While some humans are extremely short or extremely tall, other humans lie on a range between these values. Features that show continuous variation are usually controlled by several genes working together. Scientists call these polygenes. For example, around 80% of the variation in human height is genetic. The remaining variation is due to environmental effects, for example diet. In the next video, we'll start looking at how characteristics are inherited.